Okay, welcome back to EMC World. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract a signal from the noise. We're here for three days at EMC World in Las Vegas, our fourth year of EMC. We were back in 2010, Dave Vellante and I first uh, hooked up with theCUBE. Joe Tucci was on and that set the stage for really the, the future of theCUBE and EMC World has been a great place for us. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of wikibon.org. Mike Keeler is here. He's the COO of EMC's Global Services Organization. Those who of you who watch this program regularly know we love to cover services. We love the services angle. Go to servicesangle.com and check out, check out all the, the great content there. Mike, first of all, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad to be here. So, big show. Uh, you guys had yes. your, your partner summit. You kicked off this morning. Um, you know, services, you guys always say we're a product company first, which is, which is true, but EMC's always had a culture of great service. Yep. Uh, you guys will crawl through glass, bend over backwards, whatever cliche you want to use, EMC is renowned for its services. So tell us about what's going on here at the, the event and then we'll get into it. Sure, absolutely. Again, thanks for allowing me to spend some time with you. So from a services angle, as you pointed out, EMC is long rich heritage in, in delivering great services. The thing we, the journey we've been on and the transformation we've been on is really beginning to shape those services uh, more directly around the portfolio of cloud, big data, and trust. So you're starting to see us really move into tightening up the offerings around that, but also as we start thinking about the journey that customers have got to go on, whether it be cloud, trust, or big data, uh, helping them along that journey. Everything from traditional consulting through design, deploy, implementation, operations, and education. So uh, a full portfolio in terms of offerings, but the offerings very, very focused on the things we care the most about, which are cloud, trust, and big data. So you guys talk about transformation a lot. Talk about how your organization has transformed. I mean, Absolutely. cloud, big data, and trust are, you know, the, certainly trust has been around for a while, but cloud and big data are relatively new. Uh, talk about the, how you transform the organization to successfully approach those opportunities. Absolutely, and I, so a little bit of the internal, you know, the, the services organizations evolved with the company as we've gotten to the size company we are. Um, it, it, it points along the way, there's inflection points of, is the organizational construct of our services organization doing the right things for our marketplace and for our customers? And what we realized is we've gotten to size and scale that we need to actually change how we actually went to market with our services organization, how we built our portfolio, and actually how we align the uh, delivery capability to actually go deliver against those offerings. So said differently, we've really streamlined the organization to have one go-to-market services organization that represent the entire portfolio, again, of cloud, big data, and trust, but against a backdrop of a single portfolio of cloud, big data, and trust, and what are the offerings along the evolution of the implementation or transformational journey that customers go through. And then lastly, transforming the skill sets around that and beginning to, as we need to evolve our skill sets, just like our customers need to evolve their skill sets. Mike, Mike I got to ask you, we've always, we like to go back, because we had theCUBE at so many events in multiple years, we like to go back in history, 2010, when Joe Tucci was on theCUBE, his only visit, by the way, we got to talk to Joe about getting back. Go. Joe Tucci, you go. Joe, you got to come on theCUBE again. Um, but that was the message around that Boston uh, EMC world was, was about the journey to the private cloud. So I want to ask you, uh, what's, what are you guys doing now in the portfolio that's dramatically different than what was you guys were doing in 2010? Um, that's a reflection of the marketplace. Yeah, so, so great question, because I think one was just a pure alignment. When, when you get to 9,000 men and women actually delivering services day in and day out, you can find pockets of overlap and pockets of disconnect of great uh, capability. Whether we did it internally, a lot of our, our transformation, as you guys have, have covered previously, around the transformational journey of EMC, we haven't necessarily taken that next step to say, how do we take those learnings coming out of the company turn those, if you will, into intellectual capability and intellectual property that then we can actually go deploy with our customers as directly as a services organization, but also taking it all the way into our partner community. So productizing. Productizing it effectively is what we're talking about doing now, and we're talking about really enhancing the journey and bring, being able to, customers love to hear the EMC story of journey and transformation. And then they go home and say, I want that. And we had a gap from actually being able to take it from our story 
to actually offerings and capabilities that we could actually go de de deploy with our partners and our customers. You know, I'm always amazed, and I was talking to Tom Roloff earlier around comparing EMC from storage-centric to now much more of a, of a technology-centric company, obviously the portfolio. It looks a lot more like IBM, less like the old EMC. He's like, well, Joe Tucci would argue a little bit differently. We're more technology-driven. Um, but I got to ask you, I mean, obviously, you know, the services is a big part of that, I mean, and you're productizing it. What are some of the demands? Because, you know, IBM is a lucrative services right. business. And there are, uh, you know, EMC's got huge installed base which yep. drives business. So you have an untapped market of new business. We do. Right, so can you talk about how you're attacking that new business? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, a couple of things, because we've, we've gotten um, very, very clear on what we are as a services organization, and you know, just, I'm sure Tom talked to you about, we, we compare and contrast it to say, look, I don't want to be all things services. I'm not a broad-based, um, every service capability that could be put in the marketplace, that's really not what we're about. We really are trying to surround the services capability around our technology and around our offerings. So again, we're kind of back to the thematics, we, we talk about a lot in the marketplace, cloud, big data, and trust. The extension of those products uh, capabilities, uh, in a lot of cases now, what we're starting to see is we're transitioning from a product sale, a product led company to actually a services or, or solutions led. And so that journey of how to think about bringing a customer through a journey to the private cloud, a lot of times these, it starts with actually a services engagement as opposed to a product sale. And so that's a huge transformation of the company and it's a transformation of the actual so, product service offerings that we have. So I'll give you an anecdotal comment. I was talking to a CIO, uh, I was in Boston, ironically, has nothing related to the EMC conversation. I was just asking about trends in general. I asked him about EMC. Uh, you know, they have over a billion dollar budget uh, operating budget for IT. He goes, oh no, we're rubber stamping EMC drives all day long. Then no, EMC's not going away. I'm like, great, so you know, what do they do for service? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. so, so, okay, you have to go in there, put That's a stake right. in the ground, and put a new Polaroid picture, That's or an right. Instagram picture in front of the yeah, client, saying, this is the new EM EMC serv consulting services portfolio. What is that pitch if you're in front of a client? So, so I, I do think it is this transfer, depending on how long people have been engaged with EMC as a company, they would categorically say, oh, you guys are the storage company. And they wouldn't naturally extend us into, oh, you're going to be one of my, my trusted advisors to carry me on the journey to the cloud. And for us, it's about proof points and it's about places we've done that with. So we start with our EMC story to say, let me tell you about the journey of EMC and what we've done to get to a, a virtualized environment and a much better run environment, if you will, with IT. That then extends into stories around how we've done that with other customers. So for us, it really is not about necessarily the marketing message, but having that first conversation about, let me tell you definitively, how we've actually done it to ourselves, and now we have actually taken that intellectual capability and turned that into offerings that we can actually provide to you. So I'll talk about how you uh, some proof points around the customer excellence centers, because you guys have been, and SAP's been doing this, you guys have been doing a lot with SAP, but I know uh, you guys are starting to look at that now. Do you have more customer excellence centers? How do you turn those briefing centers into more right. solution centers? Because with virtualization, you guys are doing it internally, so I'm sure that's only one proof point, but what are you guys doing with customers? Any joint technology collaboration? We Can are. you explain we, that? Yeah, so, so one of the uh, new emerging trends, or at least customer demands we're seeing, is a lot of customers are wanting to get off their Unix platform and get to a virtualized x86 platform. So we're actually doing a lot with SAP on that right now. So and in a lot of cases, as you know, the ERPs of the world are in hugely complex and they're at the, the heart of the lung, some would argue, of a business. And so we're having a partner with customers to say it's a journey to get off of the Unix platform. But they see a world where one, they can get better scale and performance, which is a good thing because everybody's reaching for how they spend their capital dollars. But also, they see that as the, the jumping off point to a much better world as the world uh, SAPs of the world talk about enhancing their portfolio. So we're doing a lot of that in joint relationships or joint uh, efforts with our customer. Um, we continue to see that to be the case because again, a lot of these are, how do you change the production environment? We, you've got to do that hand in hand with a customer. And in a lot of cases, we do that with partners as well because again, we don't do it all, but we, we have been the journey uh, transformational leader around this. Like I feel like the, um, the simpler IT gets, the more complicated it gets. <laughs> in the cloud, it sounds good, and then you really get into it. It's like, okay, I got I to gotta manage my privacy and my security. Now we're talking about soft, the software-defined data center. Um, let's talk about that, that a little bit from a services standpoint. First of all, where are customers with regard to the software-defined data center? Are they tuned into it? Are you helping them tune into it? What will EMC services role be in terms of getting to people, people to software-defined 
data center. And what's the, what's the motivation what's the for them? Sure. So, so a couple things. Right now, uh, we're in a lot of conversations, which is an educate to understand um, type of activity. And I think for us, mm. like, just like we've done with cloud, we'll continue to uh, build a set of educational offerings around what does it mean? What does it mean from a business case? And on ROI, uh, how do I go talk to business leaders around, is there real value in moving to a software-defined data center? I think then that moves into the, high end, the higher end consulting or advisory services to say, I'm not going to get this just like the journey to the cloud is a multi-step process. We're building out offerings right now that begin to start uh, customers down that journey with the recognition of that journey's a couple of years in the running. And oh, by the way, you know, there's still a lot of parts of the software-defined data center that have yet to be the technology be proven in the marketplace. And so we're starting to, uh, in a couple of customers, do proof of concepts around how, how materially is it, how material difference uh, the operating environment is, but the uh, financial envelope if you got to a software-defined data center. So I describe it as the early stages, but because we're you know have earned the right to talk about journey to the cloud, customers are naturally uh, coming back to us to say, educate me on this and how to think about a software-defined data center. Yeah. So I want to come back with a question on that and, and sort of understand what you're learning. I know it's early, but, but the motivation for software-defined data center for a a supplier like EMC, I mean, it's, it's both you know, threat and opportunity, right? Yeah, you're going right, to cannibalize right. your existing base, but at the yep. same time, you're going to be able to integrate uh, you know, other applications faster. Uh, you're going to be able to, to have a much more facile and, and changeable environment. Um, you're going to maybe open up new markets, right. you know, new partnerships. Um, so what are you finding is the motivation for the customers? You, you touched on financial, is that really the, the big motivation you know, for those guys? You know, still in the early days, but uh, the proof of concepts that we're actually working with customers, the economics are so compelling to get off of the siloed platforms that they're on into a world that, one, gives them more flexibility to move workloads where they want to be able to move workloads at the right economic or service level, but also with a view to, for the first time, customers are starting to see, I no longer have to make, when if I make this decision to go to XYZ technology, that's a five or 10 year decision. They're starting to see this notion of the software defined data center is a way out of uh, ending up with a, a legacy environment of cost and structures that are, that are very hard to get out of because we have real world applications that run there and you know, it's, as we all know, it's hard to turn those applications off. So the you know, early days, but the economics are incredibly compelling. And, and the economics are around people and process, I would presume, right? I mean, that's 70-30 pie chart? Yeah, it's, 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 it's surprisingly, and again, it's, you know, uh, we haven't got all the way through the studies, but it's, it's people, it's processes, but it's also the technology. When you really start to think, being able to take out huge swaths of your legacy environment uh, and begin to move those, um, that starts to change some very fundamental operating expenses that these IT organizations have, and it allows them to, again, go repurpose that money in the development of the next generation application. So how about cloud evolution? I mean, we've been talking today in theCUBE a lot about how we sort of went from, you know, it was a development environment to, to oh, the economy goes down, so I'm going to shift my CapEx to OpEx to, to now I'm going to, Really, a lot of it was driven by the business line, yep. the shadow IT, that's been sort of the last couple of years. And now it seems to be, okay, CIOs are embracing cloud, we're actually going to help the organization get to this federated cloud right. approach. Can you talk about where customer, uh, customers are at with cloud and then again tie it into EMC services? Sure, um, so you know, uh, because in some cases, if you've been with cloud for a while, it feels like we've been talking about this for many years, and you think, okay, this is time for us to get on a new topic. But the reality is, a lot of our customers are still on the journey. Um, you know, you would say there, it, it is certainly a mainstream conversation, but because of the difficulty of the, the environments that most of the IT organizations are in today, we're still seeing a lot of basic blocking and tackling work to get to a virtualized cloud environment. The enhancement of that is really around the, the, the IT as a service, so thinking about the entire platform as a service. Um, we're probably, I, you know, Mike's view of the world, we're 50 to 60% of the you know, uh, marketplace through that. Lots of great momentum to your point around now business leaders are actually engaging in the conversation and helping the conversation. However, one of the things most recently we've seen is really business leaders, because of the marketplace, um, don't always understand what this means. And in, we can talk about it in technology terms, business leaders think about it in economics and business terms. And in a lot of cases, uh, the IT organizations were coming to us saying, it's my business leader that does help me, help educate my business leader. And so, from a services angle, we've now created a series of education classes that are focused on business leaders for uh, educate them on what does it mean to get to the cloud and what does it mean not from a technology standpoint, but from a business standpoint. And that's, so that's starting to help the marketplace as well with business leaders getting 
much more of a grasp around how do they think about their journey to the cloud. And of course you've seen Amazon be a lot more aggressive about going after the, 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 the traditional uh, enterprise IT space. Is, is Amazon another quiver in the arrow uh, for, for, for CIOs and, and EMC services? Is it, is it something that a lot of customers are embracing? Is it the enemy? How, how, what's your point of view um, on Amazon? Yeah, so I mean, from, I'll give you from most of the, the traditional customer viewpoint of that is, is a lot of the Amazon services are actually happening outside of the IT organization. So lines of business are engaging with an Amazon to stand up what looks to be seemingly innocuous. So I just want to put a test site out there. I want to put a little bit of development. But we all know how this goes. Just, you know, <laughs> once it lands there, it never leaves. <laughs> So, you know, when you talk to those business leaders of why would you go to Amazon, they, they would look at their internal IT organization typically and say they're not nimble enough, they're not fast enough. Because most of the time, any of these public cloud providers, it's not the economics that drive them there, it's the speed with which right. they can actually get into production and get into business. And so it will be, it's a part of the ecosystem, no question. I think for the core IT organizations, it will be, uh, first of all, getting their journey accelerated on being much more nimble around how they get to the cloud, uh, or IT as a service infrastructure. And then ultimately, how you actually knit something together like an Amazon. Well, there's web a lot service. of bypassing going on. You know, we were talking to one um, enterprise customer, David, up here inside at wikibon.org, where, where they said, hey, you know, one of the other things we're watching out for besides the Amazon shadow IT app tactic that you just mentioned is just people just going and putting the credit card down right. for Dropbox. Right. And <laughs> it's like, yeah. I need this, nah, screw IT. Right. Yeah. No, no that's, but, right. that's right. But that's what they're doing. I mean, yeah. that's a fact. So, shadow IT is kind of like a legitimized little innovation area. And so, and you got to rein that in. And, and it's speed to market, right? I mean, it's, you understand it when you, you, know, you have a conversation with the IT, and you know, it's the So heritage. do you have a rein it in program? So, <laughs> we, uh, yeah. rein we in actually service. do. Rein it in. <laughs> so it, um, that's Certified what, shadow IT. That's, <laughs> there you go, that's uh, But we do have a lot of customers coming to us saying, help me get to a better answer. And so, you know, from our, our standpoint, it's simple things like a competitor to a Dropbox, right, that says you can now control your data in your world as opposed to a, a third party world. That's a simple example. But the more complex example is really uh, getting the transformational journey done with the well, it's validation. I mean, you sit there and you look at Dropbox and you say, you know, wait, I just interviewed the VP of Engineering um, at uh, Stanford. Great guy, young kid. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't think he even has an, understands what really going on at IT from his standpoint. He's just putting up a cloud. Yep. But you got to be sitting there going, hey, Symantec, which owns McAfee's in the security business, why wouldn't they just put up a cloud? Sure. Not, I mean, basically, I mean, not to say it's easy to do. I mean, I. I mean, I mean, I could put up a cloud and just call <laughs> file sharing. Yeah. Right. So, so in a way, it's, I'm not. I'm oversimplifying it. But in, to your point, is that's not the hard part. Right. That is not the hard part. The hard part is then ultimately how you knit that together. And you know, it also the stage of company matters too, right? Because yeah. these small, the smaller companies that are more nimble, they're just not taxed with all of the legacy environments, and they're not taxed with all the rules, regulations, security that. Uh, you know, traditional Fortune 1000s are. And so, I think all of these things are going to be part of the ecosystem. I think they're actually driving so us. You, if you were, you know, if you were a, a, an advisor or on the board of directors, let's just say you're, you're an advisor you're to a friend who's CEO of Box.net or, um, so call them box.net, they call box now, but uh, box and Dropbox. I mean, did, what, are they, what, what are they running into? What's the, what freight train are they running straight into that they, did, they may or may not be aware of? Uh, so uh, it, it will be a question of scale. They will get to a point in time where they will have to knit end-to-end -end business processes together. And if I've got part of my products in a public cloud X and part of it in Y, um, pretty soon, customers are not going to want to engage with that business because of the difficulty of simple customer information and sim simple engagement business processes. That's where we see a lot of companies so getting incoherent. The wall. Incoherent, kinda. yeah, and pockets of data. You know, so it's it's simple, right? If you look at a Dropbox and you say, "I'm just going to drop pictures and files," but now when that starts to be part of your ecosystem of your business process, that's where the the, the trouble strikes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Mike, thanks for coming on theCUBE. We really appreciate it. Obviously, you're in charge of the portfolio of services, which is uh, really a great opportunity for EMC. Uh, congratulations. Uh, you, got a, you, got a, you got a 20 mile stair in front of yep. you, valley of opportunity, huge install base of customers, and a great opportunity for new business. I'm sure you guys do well. Uh, this is theCUBE, our flagship telecast. We go out the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.